So welcome to our case study about diversifying the curriculum at Willow Primary School. My name's Davina Sumner, I'm the head teacher. And I'm Sally Bergen, deputy head. And so at Willow, we have a range of children from a range of very, very diverse backgrounds. We have 30% of our children have English as an additional language. 36% of our children are black, Asian, or from a minority ethnic group. 13% of our children um, have special educational needs and disabilities. So we reflected on the curriculum that we were delivering to our children and that we were teaching them. And what we recognised was that it wasn't truly representative of the communities in which we were serving. So we wanted to do something about that. And this is our case study and we're really excited to share it with you. So we were inspired by several articles and research and there was one called Windows, Mirrors and Sliding Doors and the link to that, you can find it on the Padlet. So for us, we wanted to make sure that our curriculum was a window to the world for the children, but it was also an opportunity for them to see themselves reflected in their own curriculum so that it was a mirror for the children. So at Willow, we always use the EEF Implementation Guide to support um, the school improvement journey. We know that it helps us keep focus and it's a really systematic approach. So initially, we explored the issues and looked at a variety of different options. We then moved on to the preparation phase. So we think about how we're going to sequence the school improvement journey, um, how ready our team are for this change, and then also providing any training and resources that we might need. We then move on to the deliver phase where we provide ongoing support, ongoing evaluation and during that phase we found that we needed to adapt some of our, um, our processes and some of the um, things that we'd originally said in our plan, we found that we needed to adapt them after us evaluating them. And now we're at the point of sustaining, so we've looked at opportunities to share good practice with the rest of um, the team and also to evaluate the impact of the changes that we've made and then plan for future um, movements and future improvements. So the next slide gives a summary of that phase, the preparation phase. We started by looking at diverse book lists that other people have compiled. Then we asked teachers to create their own wish lists and we began by buying some books off of these lists. We were then able to update the text using class as writing stimuli and those used for whole class guided reading. And these, alongside our reading passport books, have formed our diverse reading spine. When we developed the diversity of our English and reading books at school, one of the books we started reading in year four as a class reader was Anisha, Accidental Detective. The class thoroughly enjoyed the story and many of the children could see their own culture represented in it, making links with their own family and with Anisha's British Indian family. One girl in particular, who was normally really quiet and shy, really came to life when she began to talk about her experiences of attending weddings when we were learning about Anisha's Auntie Bindi's wedding. She also enjoyed bringing in her Lenga outfits to share and discuss her knowledge of the wedding traditions and that in turn enhanced the other children in class's understanding of the events we were reading about. Diversifying our reading curriculum also led to us developing this in other curriculum areas such as history and geography. Our perceptions and understanding of the world and its cultures are shaped by what we read so we've given careful consideration to the books and texts we use in history and geography to support learning, to ensure they reflect society and a wide range of diverse and significant individuals. Some examples of some of the books we are using are Windrush Child, 
Race to the Frozen North and Hidden Figures. We already had our reading passports in place um, and these contain key texts that we want all children to read during their time at Willow. Now the first lockdown actually provided us with an ideal opportunity um, to audit and update these, not only in terms of BAME characters, cultures and settings, but also around SEND, gender and LGBTQ. So we recognise the need to develop our curriculum and we did this through developing topics, looking at texts, the themes but also the substantive concepts that weave their way through our curriculum. We also recognise that within each subject and each topic we really wanted to focus on the key individuals that the children were learning about from a range of different perspectives. So for example, we introduced um, Lewis Latimer rather than Thomas Edison in year six and thinking about electricity. And we, within that section of that particular topic, we asked the children now to consider why is Lewis Latimer less famous than Thomas Edison? So it's thinking about the social and the moral aspects of our curriculum too. So the next two slides will provide you with a summary of some of the changes that we've made to our curriculum. This term, year six, I've been studying about World War II. As part of this topic, we have been researching the Black and Asian soldiers and their vital role towards our victory in World War II. This leads us brilliantly onto our book, The Windrush Child, by author Benjamin Zephaniah. This book is about a Jamaican boy whose father left him to the Empire Windrush to, build, to rebuild England after, after the Second World War. This means the boy grew up without a, fa without a father uh, and only grew up with their mother and grandmother surrounding him. One day they were given the opportunity of a lifetime to go to Jamaica, to go to England to reunite with the boy's father. But when he arrived, he experienced a lot of racism, which was never so before in Jamaica. Our diverse curriculum can now be seen across our school, in our classroom displays and in the corridors. So each year we have a whole school heritage and community topic in which we focus on Doncaster because we wanted to instill a sense of pride in, in the children so that they knew about their own hometown and for them to also gain a greater knowledge and understanding around Doncaster. So throughout the whole school the children learn around the race course, transport, they think about the trains and the history and the future of transport through the airport, they learn about the mansion house, the coal mining industry, and also the Commonwealth and how it's had an influence and impact on Doncaster. We develop plans to utilise our very supportive parents and the wider community to further enhance the diversity of our curriculum. And we're looking forward to being able to carry out these plans as soon as COVID restrictions allow us to. So the final stage of the EEF implementation guide is to sustain the developments and the next two slides will summarise how we have and will continue to sustain the developments that we've made.
Thank you so much for watching our case study. We hope that you've enjoyed it. And we hope to see you in Willow, hopefully in the spring term, where we can share more about our case study with you.